um, this chart and the next few, and it is the core of the vision of the Institute for Healthcare Consumerism and what we encourage people to think about on what are the next steps. Where are you on, the, on this? Even the vendors or the solution providers out there, where are you? Where's your product? And we use a five-generational model. The first were the original products that were offered back in the early 2000, 2003, and 4, and those are just high deductible plans. Initial account balance, original companies with Definity and Luminos, they've since been bought up by bigger companies, uh, but it's a pure high deductible plan with an account underneath it many times. But that was the young and healthy and wealthy, and it was subject to that criticism, and it was valid. Well, we've quickly moved on to the second generation, and for the last several years, I still believe we're, we're stuck in the second generation right now, for the most part. We have products and services in the third, fourth, and fifth, which I'll describe in a minute for, for those, but we are, for the most part, the center of where we are is still second generation, and that's a focus on behavioral change. How do I help people change behaviors with information, with support, financial uh, encouragement, rewards and incentives? And I think we're only there because we still don't have an, the right technology to help people understand what is it that they should be doing and how do I reward people? How do I reward people who, go, who are going to, uh, you know, a, a, a prenatal care? Am I, am I able to actually check when they're going to their visits? Am I able to check when somebody actually follows their doctor's orders, get medications? And we're going through a process there where uh, the most successful seems to be that people are focused on biometrics helping people understand their blood pressure, cholesterol, nicotine use, body mass index, waist size, A1C, is about six of them. And many people are taking three or four, and we've moved beyond just rewarding people for participating in programs where they don't necessarily change their behaviors or have a different outcome. We're now rewarding outcomes and health status, which is allowed under the ACA. So we believe this is a megatrend. And you can't stop megatrends. You can slow them down by legislation, but it's such a powerful force the healthcare consumerism is going to happen regardless of who gets elected in Washington. It may speed up or slow down. Third generation, I really want to focus most on when I go through some details here in my last few minutes because I think this matches up best with our next speaker. Uh, this is about how does healthcare affect your corporation and how does your corporation affect your healthcare? How are you treating your people? Where the difference between one company and another company equalizing all the issues around geography, health status, age, sex, industry, all those things, there was a 72% difference in their health care costs. And I said, as an actuary, you just wiped out the reason I got my FSA. All, all those factors that I used to build in the pricing, you tell me I can't even get close to within 72% of what the costs are going to be. And the reason was, if, you, if the first time you treat your employees like adults, is in healthcare, you're probably not going to get the benefits of healthcare consumerism. So the question is, what do you do in the rest of your organization? Do you treat them like adults? Are they allowed to invest in their own 401k plans? Do you treat them like adults by, um, by giving them paid time off as opposed to sick leave because, you know, if somebody needs a day and their kid's going to have a recital or they got to do something and they're not really sick but they need that day, what are they going to do? You're going to call in and say they're sick, right? You got to lie. You're treating them like kids. Well, give them paid time off so they can make those decisions themselves. You give them rewards and incentives on their job. Do they have a, a bonus program that's worth at least 10% uh, of their pay? So there's a whole bunch of things that um, you can do to actually treat people like adults, and that will have a much bigger impact on your health care than trying to just look at costs. You know, another presentation I've said, and I hope I don't overstate this, but I think it really is consistent with our next speaker as well, that Doing this, why would you want to do this, is not about cost. I believe it's a moral imperative to do this because if you do it right, you'll help people to be healthier, you'll save lives, and if you do that, you'll lower costs. If you try to save lives and do the right thing, you'll save money. But if you try to do it the other way around, your employees are going to be cynical, say you're just trying to cost shift to me and you won't get the effect that you want. So it's really critical that you're doing this for the right reason. And I've told these conferences before and other places where I spoke, if what you're trying to do is cut costs, don't do it. Don't do this because you'll ruin the whole reason that this should be done and you'll give it a bad reputation. Don't do it if it's all about cost reduction and cost shifting. The fourth generation is very interesting for those of us who are consider ourselves wanting to look into the future a little bit. It's healthcare that's related to you, and to you, and to you, and to me, specifically. It's very personalized. 
It's about using our own genomics, predictive modeling, cyber health aids, all sorts of things that are very personalized to the individual. We're seeing enormous amount of technology and innovation in these areas. The fifth area is the newest one, and we're seeing aspects of this. Remember that these generations don't replace the prior one, but they kind of add to it. And so you'll find products and services that are all across the board of these generations. But the idea of community health and health care, I think, is really developing out there. And if anybody hasn't read the book Blue Zone, that's really the core here. And it's how do we help each other? You only have so much time in the doctor's office. So how do we relate and connect? Things like friendship pods, sharing circles. How do, we, how do we find out what we should be doing in our own lives to deal with our families, our health care issues? that we don't get on the clinical side. You see a lot of companies are doing things out here around meditation, yoga classes, doing things that aren't traditional, but they're very important to employees' health, their well-being, and their satisfaction with their job, and that somebody actually cares about them 